Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I am here to discuss my experience with you guys about uh, the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate exam that I just passed. Since you already know that the test was like the new one, the February 2018 version, and there is a lot of confusion uh, how it can be. And uh, so let me start with some difference I have faced comparing to the old one. So this test was actually based on the world architecture uh, design. So I think it's not quite uh, good enough to have uh, feelings of different uh, uh, AWS services and products uh, instead uh, a good experience of working with them so that uh, a good combination can be provided in different solutions in different scenarios so the the whole test was actually based on a lot of scenarios and uh, most of the answers can be right answer but you have to choose the best one so that's a huge difference. Although it was my first test, uh, first attempt, uh, but I can see already by reading the blogs, forums, and uh, different articles that how it was before. Another difference, of course, you know, the question is more now 65, uh, which was 55 before. And of course, you got more time, 130 minutes. Uh, but the thing is that the time flies and actually the question were like uh, instructed in a bigger like a big paragraph so i think you really need some time to read it grasp it understand it and uh, read all the solutions and find the best one so i used all the time uh, time you should be very good at time management i believe since you have to pass 70% so that is kind of, I think, uh, make the exam even more harder because it was before uh, there were people who passed uh, by getting 65%, even less, uh, as I heard from many. So 70% is the pass mark. There were not a lot of uh, discussion about it since this is a new one and uh, people just don't know much about it and uh, uh, all the online courses and uh, practice you will find most of them are based on the old one so it's just a new release and uh, there's a difference uh, which make it really uh, kind of scary for some people um, anyway prepared for the uh, exam uh, like uh, I never had any experience of working with AWS services and uh, I was just a beginner and I started from the scratch. From the start to taking the test, it was like three weeks preparation. I believe I was quite lucky to get out of it in so short period of time. So what I did is I um, take the course on a cloud guru. This is really good one. I think especially for the people who doesn't have much uh, experience about AWS and who just want to start from the scratch. So it's a good, uh, I would suggest it, although I'm not paid for it anyway. And uh, I read uh, white papers and the best practice of AWS, which is really important. Although I didn't read like thoroughly, but of course, uh, screening uh, the important part of it. And one important thing I did, it was the practice test. I think this is really important because especially for the new release test uh, not many people know about it and hubby and there's not a lot of resources yet but i bought some practice test I, i'll provide the link below which yeah that's it that was that well and now coming the important parts what was covered in the test um ec2 instances and different types you know uh, this is quite important and you will always get a question of it. But there is not a specific question about the types and things like that. Instead, uh, the EC2 was covered and embedded in all of the questions in different ways. And it goes the same for the VPC. So, you know, uh, VPC is, is all about AWS services. I think uh, you just need to know VPC very, very well. and. Uh, 
all the questions is around around the BPC and how you subnetting and how you uh, protecting your data, how you creating um, BPC to provide solution to different architectural scenarios. Uh, IAM, uh, you need to know about the role and the uh, group and the users and the policy. There are some differences that uh, covered a little bit. And um, I got question about security group and uh, network access control list. What is the difference and uh, which uh, to use where, things like that. Uh, there were S3 bucket, uh, EBS, EFS. And um, the questions are like the diff uh, their capabilities and um, limitation, I believe. So if you are aware of those things, you can provide a solution where to use um, EFS or EBS or even different types of uh, S3 uh, storage system. And there is cloud front, uh, cloud formations, and uh, of course the use cases. There were RDS, Aurora, and DynamoDB. Uh, you should know that um, the situations where you have to migrate an existing system, uh, shall you choose DynamoDB or RDS or uh, Aurora, MySQL. And um, I got some question about NAT gateway and internet gateway. Uh, so you really need to know some difference between Internet Gateways and NAT Gateways and NAT Instances, uh, VPC endpoints, uh, VPN and why you use them, where, in which situations and how private and public uh, subnets uh, should be connected to them. So as I said, it's all about VPC. If you can architect a very uh, good VPCs, uh, you may get out of it. Then I had some, as I mentioned, S3, uh, different storage uh, on S3. And then should you use Glacier or uh, uh, something else? And the life cycle policy you need to implement and how it should be. And then the encryption, of course, that was the important part of S3. Uh, different types of encryption and why shall you choose, uh, for example, KMS or server-side encryptions uh, uh, in REST and in transit in uh, different protocols. So you really need to know about uh, S3 and encryption policies, uh, I believe. There are questions about storage gateway. Uh, so storage gateway, uh, you have to know that how you transfer or migrate um, an existing data center into AWS and what is the situation there. Do you need to use the stored volume or cached volume? So you'll get a lot of scenarios and you really need to think about it that uh, which type of volume should be the best solution. There is elastic load balancer. There's, I, I think there is like three, four questions about elastic load balancer. And then um, you really need to know the difference between the classic and application load balancer, in which scenarios you are using classics and why an application load balancer, like microservices, shall you use application load balancer or elastic load balancer, an auto scaling group, uh, how they can be differ from each other and which need to be tuned in such a way that the situations will be uh, best solution. Um, then I had some question from Redshift and uh, also Elastic Cache uh, and also some um, question about the um, different uh, AWS service like SQS. So of course you'll get a, a scenarios where you need to decouple the uh, whole architecture so that uh, different kinds of microservice doesn't uh, dependent heavily to each other, then you know that it will be SQS. Um, and then of course, if you find something like uh, notifica notify the user notification and it's an uh, SNS. Uh, I also get some question on STS, uh, simple token services, and also um, uh, to get, uh, to give the user uh, um, sign in for a short period of time 
and in a secure way to protect your data like uh, pre-signed pre URL. Uh, I got some question about Kinesis Firehose. So, so if you have, uh, for example, in a situation where you really need uh, real-time streaming, so maybe Kinesis is a good um, tools to use. And then, of course, uh, I got a question about API Gateway and uh, combining the API Gateway Lambda function. Uh, Lambda is quite new and we are like kind of in confusion that if it's coming to this test or not but yeah it was in the test and you really need to know how the Lambda works and uh, uh, what are the best scenarios where you should use Lambda and uh, how you use it, uh, how you embed Lambda function to your APIs uh, to get the better results and there are some I think one or two questions about the containers. Uh, so you need to know about ECS, um, Elastic Container Service. Uh, I think those are the main things, but there's, of course, there's a lot of questions. If you can um, create a VPC and creating some subnets and try to log into an EC2 instance and uh, connect uh, to different VPC or different uh, subnet and they use the internet gateway or net instance to uh, connect it with the outside world um, i think you are halfway done and the some are just getting into know the different aws products so if you allow me to give some tips on uh, uh, the test i would say that uh, um, if you are a beginner like me uh, you should go for uh, a course there's a lot of course online this is very important that uh, whether you do a course or not uh, you really need to do the things by yourself like doing some labs by yourself creating vpcs play around with uh, different services so doing things by own i think that's the best uh, tips i could ever uh, provide just uh, do some practice test those are just available uh, practice tests I, I i would say again it's really important uh, especially for the new release 2018 exam uh, it gives you a feelings of how the real test be, can be and uh, how you manage your time uh, and uh, different scenarios will be provided and the best part of the practice test is actually that it will show you that uh, what is your limitations and what you really need to improve. So if you are not passing the practice test, let's say if you are not getting 90% uh, all the time, uh, maybe you are not prepared. Important about a practice test is that uh, it's not enough to do practice test, but after you complete your test, you must need to go through all the questions again and check them. Uh, not only the wrong answer you provided, but also the right one, because maybe you randomly choose one that clicked right, doesn't mean that you will click the same uh, solution again. So what I did is that I went to the practice test and then I went through all the answers, right and the wrong one, and why the one is right and why the other were wrong. That is really, really help you to understand because uh, if you can understand the other three multiple options are wrong because of this, 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 then you, you are getting a lot of knowledge of. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, it was fun to share my experience with you and uh, I will see you next time and good luck.